Welcome back everyone for some more of the 2022 FIFA World Cup here with Uruguay here in FIFA 23. And we are going to be playing the World Cup Final here against England. You can see Suarez winning that man in the match there. And deservedly so, he's been amazing. England looking to win their second World Cup title. Uruguay is looking to win their third. And their first since 1950. But before we continue on, hope you guys have an awesome day today. Hope you guys are doing well. Take a look at the squad one more time. I do have Cavani and Suarez starting up front. Valverde, Bentancur in midfield, Derisqueta and Torres out wide. Oliveira, Araujo, Jimenez, and Caceres make up a back row of Muslera and goal. But we are going to be going up against England, which are playing a 4-3-3 holding. Raheem Sterling, Harry Kane, Phil Foden up front, Mason Mount, Calvin Phillips, and Declan Rice make up the midfield. Their defense consists of Luke Starr, Harry Maguire, John Stones, and Kyle Walker. And Jordan Pickford is the goalkeeper for them here. You can see me, uh, Mason Mount for England. And I'm going to put on the red for them this time. I think this is either the third or fourth time I'm playing against England. But I think this has got to be the first time I'm going to have them wear their red kits. But anyway, clear skies to do Little Cell Stadium. Hope you guys are looking forward to this. I know I sure am. So without further ado, let's get into this. See both teams walking out, but we'll be listening to both national anthems. England looking to win their second World Cup, their only other, their only World Cup to date, their only World Cup win. Was back in 1966, Jeff Hurst uh, scoring a hat trick. Was the only player to score a hat trick in the World Cup final up until Kylian Mbappe scored one. For France in the World Cup Final just a few days ago. Uruguay looking to win their first World Cup since 1950. Be their third World Cup after overall should we win this. Interesting that Calvin Phillips is the captain instead of Declan Rice. Means how both teams got here. England beating Morocco, Ecuador, and Croatia in order to get here. We beat Portugal, Sweden, and Austria in order to get here. They really did an awful job on Luis Suarez's face scan. But who will be lifting the World Cup here at Lucille Stadium? Will it be Uruguay, the two-time champions, or will it be England take, uh, looking to bring it home, so to speak? Of course, the anthem, it's coming home. Is it coming home, or is it going to its inaugural home in Montevideo? Okay, Cavani. I don't know why he's playing so far out wide. Torres, I don't... <laughs> Jordan Pickford and his small arms could not get to that. Interesting camera work there, EA. Yeah, I thought Torres screwed that up. I really did. That is his third goal in six matches. Nice work by Cavani. Can I sweat this? Can I sweat? Is that going to be onside? Yes, it is. Can't keep Suarez off the goal the score sheet. Goal for Uruguay, 
It's easy to forget how much of a beast Cavani is up front, but my god, he is a strong player. He's definitely the kind of striker you would like to have, especially when you're trying to bully the back the back line of the opposition. Torres, can you get a brace? Yes, you can. Excuse me. I don't know what Calvin Phillips was trying there, but anyway, we're going to go with a sim. Who did England have? Okay, they got Nick Pope, the backup goalkeeper, plays for Newcastle. Um, Trent is in there, Bukayo Saka, Callum Wilson, the Newcastle striker, Karen Trippier, the Newcastle right back. Looks like Gareth Southgate elected not to play any of the Newcastle players. Jude Bellingham on the bench, and Marcus Rashford on the bench. Questionable decisions there by Garrett Southgate. Okay, can we... Come on, guys, quit losing the ball! Oh, here we... We're gonna concede. No, I can't have this. We have got to learn to play the ball forward. Okay, I'm gonna pull it forward and I'm gonna go back to simulation. Okay, come on, guys. I can't be bailing you out like this. I can't. Do something. Because I'm not gonna have a repeat of what happened in my Serbia tournament mode. Our team has become bereft of ideas right now. They're gonna score. They're gonna score. I knew they were gonna score. Cause our, this team refuses to play defense. I've never seen a team rule over on defense like this team does. Okay, who's our weak links here? Benton Kerr? He's been invisible pretty much this entire World Cup. I don't know what the story with him is, but he's doing my head in. Caceres can take a come off for Vina. Jimenez can come off for Coates. Torreira can come on for freaking Bentoncourt. I don't know what Bentoncourt's uh, deal is in this World Cup, but he's done little to nothing. But here we go. Can we please complete a pass? I mean, I understand this is England. They are one of the better teams in the World Cup, but my god. You guys are absolutely rolling over for these guys. Okay, can we get on the, uh, the opposition side of the pitch, please? You know, since you guys don't know how to move forward, I'm going to teach you guys how to freaking move forward. Okay, let's see. Okay, pass it out wide. You actually move forward towards the opposition. I know this is a radical concept for you guys, but come on. At least make an attempt. I cannot believe I have to explain this to professional footballers. Suarez. And you have to feel with 20 minutes remaining that our hands have to be on this World Cup trophy right now. Okay, let's see if you guys can actually move forward on your own without me having to jump in. There we go. Actually run towards the opposition goal. 
Isn't that an interesting concept? That's how you score goals. And look at that. Uh, Facunda Torres getting a hat trick. Isn't it amazing what you can do when you actually freaking attack? And I'm jumping in again because we're getting close to time and I really don't feel like conceding another goal. Of course, I'm probably going to concede a penalty here. Play it up! Play it out! Play it out! Play it out! Play it out! Why won't this team play out the ball? Play out the ball! It's not that hard of a concept. You get the ball, and you get it the heck away from your freaking goal area. I cannot believe how much this team has deteriorated since the group stage. I really don't. And it just dawned on me that England was our group opponents. It's something like ever since we lost these guys, freaking Uruguay has gone south. But anyways, we are just a few minutes away from lifting our third World Cup title. Our first since 1950. And there we go, Uruguay are World Cup champions. The trophy will be going home to South America, but instead of it going to Argentina like it, it's going to in real life, it's going to be going to Montevideo, the capital of Uruguay. I tell you what, if we would have conceded a goal there because my, my team does not know how to clear out the freaking ball, I would have been steaming. But anyway, what's done is done. Luis Suarez, his final World Cup appearance, will be lifting the trophy. One of the greatest players of his generation, one of the most underrated players of his generation, lifts the World Cup trophy for Uruguay. Uruguay not be, may not be a very large country in terms of, of, of both area and population. But it does have a rich footballing history. It's one that a lot of people, it's easy for people to overlook. But at the same time, though, it's, it would be very unwise to think of Uruguay as a small country on the, on the international stage. Because this is one of the bigger teams in South America. And I still remember the run that they had in 2010 uh, when they reached uh, the semifinals. They ended up losing to the Netherlands. On that magical run, they had Diego Forlan, Ed Edinson Cavani, Luis Suarez, players like that on the team. Anyway, we did have more possession. We actually had better passing accuracy. We had better everything. There's literally not one category that England had better than us. I'm very surprised about that, considering I didn't think we played all that great. Man of the match has to be Tor. No, it's Cavani with his two assists. I would have thought it would have gone to Torres. De Arisqueta got two assists. Suarez with a brace. Valverde with an assist. Torres with a goal. And I did only make those three substitutions, which England didn't make any. Which I don't think it would have made a difference either way. But there we go, Uruguay have won their third World Cup in their history. It will not be coming home for England. So they'll have to wait a little bit longer for their world title. But you can see Uruguay are the champions of the world. But we're going to go ahead and go to news. Okay, Torres with his hat trick. Okay, you can see... Who is that? They are Esqueta. And Oliveira are the only players that we have that made it to the team in the tournament. That's a little bit disappointing. Al Owais uh, from Saudi Arabia is the, the uh, goalkeeper of the tournament. Gareth Bale has been named uh, 
player of the tournament. I think it's one of the few times that I've actually noticed on here that one of our players was not named player of the tournament. You can see Luis... No, that's not Luis Suarez. I think that's Valverde posing with the World Cup trophy. And it's stunning displays from Luis Suarez. See, he actually doesn't look too bad there. But in game, he looks awful. Take a look at stats. Suarez with his nine goals in six matches didn't quite reach double digits. Deyar Escaita, six assists in seven matches. Harry Kane right behind him. See, so Alo Waste tied with Levakovic with three clean sheets in a tournament. Muslera and Roche each with one clean sheet. There's no Serginho Dest ended up getting a red card for the United States. They finished dead last in their group, which, by the way, I will show a recap of the groups. You can see we finished second behind England. England may have won that battle, but they ended up losing the war overall. Norway and Qatar um, above Belgium. That's interesting. Poland and Cameroon getting grouped in Group D. No surprises in Group E. You see Group F, Iran and United States getting eliminated in the group stage. Saudi Arabia topping a group with Czech Republic, Ukraine, and Iceland. And Italy topping their group, Croatia in second. Spain getting grouped alongside Mexico. You see round of 16. Only one match going to penalties throughout the entire tournament. That's interesting. Of course, Croatia finishing third, Austria fourth. And we did finish off England here in the match that mattered the most, the World Cup Final. But yeah, this was a little bit of a mixed bag tournament mode. I enjoyed the, the first part of it when we were in the group stage. This, this team felt so good in the group stage, but I don't know what happened from the round of 16 on. They just never... I was just never quite able to get this team in the group that they were in when they were in the group stage. I don't understand... What the issue was, I don't think I messed with the team too terribly much where it caused chemistry issues, but it just it just didn't seem like they even knew how to do how to do the basics in football. As you can see in that final against England, I pretty much had to uh uh spoon feed them more or less. I spoon feed them how to make an attack and freaking they could not clear the ball to save their lives. And like I said, if if they would have got a consolation goal to make it five two, I'd not would not have been happy about that, but yeah, I mean, there were some negatives, but at the same time, there were some positives. Maxi Gomez was excellent up front alongside Luis Suarez. Valverde was a tank in midfield. Police Street wasn't too bad. I was uh, pleased with him. Um, Arisqueta, he was okay. He didn't seem to know the offside rule uh, all that much. Torres, solid player, though sometimes he felt a little bit slow and it seemed like he didn't want to make his runs. But the back line was questionable, but overall they did their job, and Muslero and Moshe were able to get a clean sheet, but each, so... But yeah, I had a, lot, a bit of fun with this Uruguay inside. I'm actually very pleased I was able to play as this nation, lead them to their third World Cup title. And um, next time I'll see you guys in tournament mode, which... At the time you're seeing this, it'll be Christmas Eve. There will not be an a episode of this tomorrow. I'm going to be taking... Christmas off in terms of FIFA, and then on Boxing Day, which of course is the 26th, I will be beginning my next tournament mode, which will be a team that qualifies for the tournament in real life. And I should also say that I'm going to be playing as a team that has never won the World Cup, so I'm going to be going back to playing as teams that have not won a World Cup before. But I did want to play as Uruguay because... You look at this team, and you have to feel that this team was way too talented not to make it out of the group. So, that's why I went with them, just to give them a little bit of glory. Get back to where they were originally when they won the, not only the inaugural World Cup title, but also won it in 1950. So, it was nice bringing them back to prominence, because this is a nation rich in history, and I think they deserve more recognition. And with talents like Darwin Nunez, Lucas Torreira... 
Federico Valverde, Araujo, players like that. This this nation has a bright future. It's just they just need to take that next step. I know they're getting new a new manager, um, and hopefully we'll see this team in the World Cup four years from now when uh, the U.S., Canada, and Mexico host it. So, by the way, thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope you guys are enjoying the series so far. I'll be seeing you guys again next time.